Welcome. In this video, I'd like to show you the native Docs Automator integration for NoLoco. NoLoco is a popular no code internal tools builder. Um, and now, with the native Docs Automator integration, you can turn your data inside of NoLoco into beautiful professional PDFs. Let's get into it and let's see how that works. So, I'm here in NoLoco in my account and what I would like to do in order to show you how the integration works is I would like to take some project data here. This is the project management tool and I would like to um, add project data to a project report. Um, you see the template here, which I have created already. So for those of you who are not familiar with Docs Automator, Docs Automator works with Google Docs and you define your templates in Google Docs using um, the template syntax that you see here on the screen. Please also find links in the description below to more help articles. Um, so I would like to take some data, some project data, and uh, turn it into a PDF using this Google Doc template. How do we do that? The first thing we need to do is we need to have a uh, Docs Automator account, um, and then uh, you will see a new automation button. So in uh, Docs Automator, an automation is always um, a, a data source and a template, basically a data source um, that then is taken, data is taken from the data source in order to create documents with a certain template. So the first step is give this a name, we call this uh, project report, and then we select NoLoco, and then we pick uh, our uh, PM template 2024. We could search this year. There it is. We pick that one, and that's about it. That's all you have to do in Docs Automator because the rest is happening inside of NoLoco because it's natively integrated there. So let's see how that works. In NoLoco, you have uh, workflows, um, and you can um, uh, you can start uh, document creations inside of these workflows um, with certain triggers. What we're gonna do. Um, for our showcase here is we're going to use this create document button um, and we'll then uh, create documents when that button is clicked. So the first thing that I have to do is create a new workflow. Um, let's call this, so this is on the project table because we want to um, add project data and let's call this create project report. Um, and this is on demand when an action button is uh, triggered. And then we add the action. And now you will see that there's a list of actions you can choose from. And one of those actions is generate a document with Docs Automator. So we can just click on this and this um, loads a bit. If you're doing this for the first time, you will have to add your API key, the API key you get from your Docs Automator account in settings. And then all the way at the bottom, there you see that API key, you can copy it from there. And then you can select automations. This basically pulls all the automations from your account where the data source is set to no local. So in other, our case, there is only one. It's the um, project report, or which we call project report. And then I can map my data. So here I have um, all these placeholder fields that I defined in my Google Docs template, and I can map that data. If I would add another placeholder, let's say I want to um, uh, add a uh, description, um, and I would add the placeholder like this. I could go here again. I could click on refresh. Currently, there is no description. I click on refresh. And now we would have the description down here. Um, actually, I don't really want a description, so I'm going to uh, delete this again. I think we can say delete row. Yeah. Uh, I refresh, and description should disappear again. There we go. So it's really easy to sort of add placeholders, refresh, uh, map them, add more placeholders, refresh, map more. Now let's map our data. Project name is project main, status is status. So I'm just mapping data here from my uh, projects table here in NoLoco. I'm using NoLoco tables here. Um, over here. Uh, next is the client account. Um, I need to select the name. Then start date. For dates, we have to uh, use a formula to format them a bit. Um, end date formula, I've done that already in advance. And then there's the primary contact. Um, sorry, primary contact, I think is also, I oh know, it's here. Um, no, let's not take the last name, let's take the full name. And then we have something 
which is called line items. So in our template, you see the line item declaration here. Line items is basically a dynamic list of data. So in our NoLoco table, we have our projects table, but then we also have um, we um, have linked uh, tables there. And what I want to add to my document here is work items. And you can see the work items table here. And work items are linked to projects. So if I go into the projects table, you will see um, here this work items collection. And this work items collection links to work items. And we can now dynamically generate the items that are linked to the project. You have more use cases for this, like invoices, for instance, and you have line items on invoices. So there are many, many cases where um, having access to dynamically adding data makes a lot of sense because we don't really know how many items we're going to have there. Could be a project with 50 work items, could be only two work items. So that's um, how we sort of use these uh, dynamic tables in these line item tables. So let's go back to our mapping. We uh, go to line items, we can select a linked field here. We're going to use the work items one. And then I'm going to get the placeholders that I've defined here in my table. So currently this has a very strong uh, strict syntax called line underscore items underscore and then a unique name. So you see for billable hours, I called this billable hours. For performed, I called this line items work performed. For started at line items started at, etc., etc. So now I can map this as well. We get access to the fields in the linked table now. So in our case, we use the um, oops, billable hours and then work performed and started at, I think this is, uh, sorry, it's called formula. I didn't uh, name this properly. Um, and then we have the hourly rate and then we have total build. So that's it. Now sort of the fields are mapped and all the uh, linked records, in this case, in the um, work items table uh, will be added as rows in that table. Last thing here is to enter a file name uh, that we want to save this as. Um, we just use the project name as the file name. And then we're done. So next step is now the document is getting generated when the button is clicked, but we're not really doing anything with the document yet. What we now need to do is define another action where we, for instance, update a record. We want to update our project. Um, we need to pass the ID here uh, from the trigger, the triggering project. Um, and then the field is the report, like there's a report file field. And there we take this, the, the output of step one, the create document field and the documenter file. We can just add that. Click on done. In our app, I've defined um, a field here to show these created, uh, created PDFs. So this is basically just rendering whatever um, exists in the PDF file field or in the file field. Um, and now I can click on create document. Um, it says it can be found. Reason for that is that I need to probably remap this. We do this. So we have down these action buttons down here. I click on this record. Yes, we had to reselect the create project report, the workflow that we created. Um, I click on done, go on create record. Uh, the requested for workflow is not enabled. So we enable this, we try again. It's not enabled, probably took a second. And let me try again. And now to work. Now we wait. Actually just realized that the, the project I was trying to create the document for didn't have any work items. So I'm going to do this in uh, this one now. I click on uh, create document. Um, and then uh, we wait a bit for the document to be generated. There we go. This is finished now and now it gets rendered. And this was the Jones House project. So it got added as a title. Status is in progress. Probably this can be, can be a bit nicer. Um, but um, that's just text that needs to be changed. We have a start date, we have an end date, uh, and we have sort of that dynamic list of work items 
um, which were linked to this project. Yeah, and that's it. That's how easy it is to turn your NoLoco data into PDF using Docs Automator. Very curious to see what you do with it, uh, what kinds of docs documents you are automating with Docs Automator. Uh, if you need any help, please don't hesitate to reach out. Always happy to help, uh, always there for you. Um, you find an in-app chat in the Docs Automator uh, web app here in the right lower corner. And now I wish you happy automating and speak to you very soon.